So, um, hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. Today's subject matter is Finland's consulate services in New York and dual citizenship. This is part of informational webinar series organized and brought to you by Finlandia Foundation National, the leading independent organization fostering Finnish culture and Finland in the United States. Today we are collaborating with the Consulate of Finland in New York, cooperating with Finnish institutions and other Finnish and Finnish American groups is extremely important for Finlandia Foundation. Together we can have more efficient outreach to our communities. I think today we have broken the participation records, so we are so pleased to see so many signed up. Clearly there is a need and enough interest. And because of this success, we will be planning additional sessions as continuation for today's topic, as well as new matters. Our goal is to bring the source of proper information to all of you. Today's presenters are professionals and seasoned subject matter experts from our New York consulate. I will read their impressive bios. I will start with um, Mika Koskinen, who is the Consul General Ambassador in New York. Mika completed his undergraduate studies in economy in the Economic School in France in 1990, followed by Master of Science in Economy Helsinki Graduate School of Economics in Finland in 1991. He did PhD studies at the School of Economics in Bergen, Norway in 1992. His career in the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Finland started when he joined the diplomatic training course in 1995. He has served as ambassador of Finland in Peru and concurrent ambassador in Bolivia and Ecuador in 2015 and 19, uh, to 19 and is currently the Consul General of Finland in New York, where he has assumed his official duties as of July 2019. Mika's other postings include serving as Director uh, of the Human Resources uh, uh, Unit in Helsinki and as Counselor in the Embassy of Finland in Madrid, Spain, and the Embassy of Finland in Dublin, Ireland. One side comment. Uh, I think we, we can hear a little bit of the side clicking. Maybe we should, if panelists could be mute uh, for the time being, that would be great. Sorry about that. All righty. So that was Mika's uh, impressive bio. And then I will continue with um, Maria Halavana Pols. Uh, she is the Deputy Consul General in New York. Head of Economic and Cultural Affairs and Communications. So Maria completed her master's degree in social sciences, majoring in political science at University of Helsinki in 2003. The following year, she started her diplomatic journey and she has held several significant positions in communications throughout her career. In 2014, she completed the official diplomatic training course with the MFA. Prior to her current position, she held a position of Deputy Consul General of Finland in Shanghai, China. And our third presenter is Hanna Luhtala, Consul in, in New York, uh, Head of Consular Services. Hanna started at the MFA in 1995 and has thus been working for the Finnish Foreign Service for nearly 26 years. Her very first posting abroad was at the permanent mission of Finland to the United Nations in New York in 1996. In addition to that, she has served in Geneva, Switzerland, Brazil, and the Hague, Netherlands, as well as in several positions at the MFA in Helsinki, the latest being in the Unit for Crisis Management and Security Policy and in the Unit for Latin America. She arrived at her current posting as Consul at the Consulate General in New York City, in April 2018 and will be staying another year and a half. Welcome all to share your expertise with us. So um, for all participants, uh, I just wanna tell that the recorded version of this webinar will be available at a later date. 
And also, if you want to receive this presentation, please send our office an email to request it. Our email address is office at finlandiafoundation.org. <clears throat> the questions from the audience can be submitted through Q&A function. Those will be answered at the end of the presentation. Please use this opportunity to find more information. Our operations manager, Maria Voltaine, will be coordinating the Q&A segment. And I have to introduce myself. So my, my name is Anne-Marie Pastor. I'm the president of Finlandia Foundation National. And with any questions about the activities of Finlandia Foundation National, don't hesitate to connect with me directly. And today, uh, we are discussing general consulate services and dual citizenship issues. I am sure that there are plenty more to talk about, but as I said earlier, this is to be continued. And now I will pass the turn to Mika Koskinen. Welcome, Mika. Thank you. Dear Finns and friends of Finland, hyvät suomalaiset ja Suomen ystävät, first of, first of all, I want to wish you all a happy new year full of renew hope and renewal. I hope you and your families are staying safe and healthy in these very difficult times. We need to be reminded of our Finnish CISU to tackle hard situations like this unrelenting pan pandemic. Resilience is still needed while we wait for our vaccination turn. But in the meantime, remember to follow the official guidelines, keep the masks on, avoid social contacts and indoor activities as much as possible in order to get to win, in order to win this battle against the virus. And I am completely sure we Finns will come back stronger than ever after this struggle. Thank you to the Finlandia Foundation for organizing this webinar about the consular affairs. It is a very important part of the work of the Consulate General of Finland in New York. Although only, only with a limited capacity, we are, all, we are fortunate enough to have been able to provide all consular services to Finnish citizens after the first months of lockdown last spring. In this unusual situation, I am very happy that we have this occasion to share information with you and give answers to your questions and concerns. The Consular General of Finland is happy to help you. Our services are open for the public two days a week by appointment. Our telephone services are open from Monday to Friday and our emergency services 24-7. Muistakaa pitää huolta itsestänne, pitää maskeja, välttää väkijoukkoja ja suljettuja sisätiloja. Yhdessä sääntöjä noudattamalla pääsemme yli pandemia. Tässä meitä auttaa suomalainen ainutlaatuinen sisumme. Olen todella iloinen, että tämä tilaisuus on järjestetty ja voimme vastata kysymyksiin ja huoliinne. Suomen pääkonsulaatin Konsulipalvelut ovat tällä hetkellä auki kaksi päivää viikossa ajan varauksella. Puhelinpalvelun toimi joka arkipäivä ja hätäpalvelun vuorokauden ympäri. Olemme New Yorkissa teitä varten. Pidetään yhteyttä. Finally, many thanks to Anne-Marie Pastor, president of the Finlandia Foundation, for this great initiative to organize this event. I hope you find this useful and feel free to contact us. We are always here for you, your assistance. So let's keep in touch. Now I give the floor to our Deputy Consul General, Mrs. Maria Halavanapolis, who will give you an overview of the work that the Consul General of Finland in New York is realizing. Please, Maria, kiitos. Thank you, Mika, and good evening, everybody. It's really great to see that there's so many of you online tonight. I would also like to thank Finlandia Foundation for taking the initiative to organize this seminar on this very important topic. Before we go on to the consular affairs, I would like to give you just a short overview of what we do here at the Consulate General in New York. So in addition to consular services, we work to promote Finland's commercial interests, 
to improve the operational conditions for the Finnish cultural agents and also to strengthen Finland's national brand in the US. In practice, this means that we work together with the Finnish companies who are here in the US or who are planning to enter the market. We give them, for example, market information and advice, and we facilitate their networking with local actors, whether it's city or state level actors, private companies or investors. We have been mostly working with startups and small and medium sized companies from many different sectors. But if you think about the strong points of Finland, we naturally work most with green economy, buyer and circular economy and ICT and digitalization. When it comes to the sectors of culture and creative industries, we promote the visibility and mobility, the operational requirements and also the business potential of Finnish artists here in the US. As on the commercial sector, we work rather as a facilitator to, for potential cooperation partnerships, networking, visits and events. And all this work is done in close cooperation with our local partners here in the US, but also with different partners in Finland. The third task that we have here at the consulate is the public diplomacy work, which aims to strengthen Finland's brand and to highlight the Finnish know-how and excellence in the US, whether it means increasing the awareness of Finnish technology or innovation capabilities, culture, or for example, high-level education, just to mention a few. We are also very active on social media, and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And you can also subscribe to our newsletter, which highlights our key topics and events with a focus on business and culture. The Consulate General has a huge area to cover here in the US, and our activity co scope covers 35 states. Basically, we are talking about states on the East Coast and in the Midwest, as well as two special administrative regions, Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. Due to our location, we naturally focus mostly here on our activities, mostly focus here in, in New York, but we also have active relations to other states in, in our activity area. And last, before we go on to the consular affairs, we do not work alone, but we rather work together with our Team Finland partners. And with Team Finland partners, I mean uh, the embassy in Washington, DC, the Consulate General of Finland in Los Angeles, Business Finland, Finnish American Chamber of Commerce in New York, and the Finnish Cultural Institute here in New York. And in addition, we have also 18 honorary consuls who work as our eyes and ears in the states where we are not present ourselves. This was our activities very briefly, and I'm not going to take more of your time so that we can start with the topic of, of tonight. Um, I would like to thank uh, again for being here online, and uh, I hope you will find tonight's webinar very useful. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Maria. And this is Hannah. And uh, I'm the consul, um, head of consular services at the Consulate General. I work with a team of three colleagues. We all do consular matters and do our best to help you with any questions um, that you may have um, as I will present to you right now. If we go back to the map a little bit, Maria talked about our jurisdiction, thank you. So the area in blue would be the area that the Consulate General in New York covers that also um, applies to consular services in general. So we have a very large and very, very populated area in which we perform our tasks. Uh, the light blue is for the Consulate General um, of Finland in Los Angeles and the grayish purplish area uh, the smaller one is the area that Washington, the embassy in Washington, D.C. covers. Um, needs to be kept in mind also that Washington, D.C. handles all the political relations with Finland uh, or between Finland and United States. So they, they have other things to cover as well, even though their sort of like area of jurisdiction doesn't seem to be very big. All right, we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So um, 
talking about consular and entry services in general, uh, one of the main responsibilities of the consular general is to protect the interests of Finnish nationals um, within its territory, that is in the United States, and uh, more closely within our jurisdiction, area of jurisdiction, the blue area in the map or dark blue area. Um, there are over 20,000 Finnish nationals and approximately half a million American Finnish nationals living within the jurisdiction of the Consulate General. Um, over 100,000 Finnish tourists visit the area every year. This past year obviously has been very different from the normal years. And uh, as we all know, almost all tourism um, was halted um, towards the end of March and hasn't picked up since. Um, any normal year, New York has been one of Finn's favorite city destinations in the in the world during the past years. So um, we do have a um, lot of customers also visiting from Finland, apart from those Finns who do live here in the US. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, so based on the quantity of consular services, consular entry services offered, the consular general is uh, one of Finland's biggest representations in the world. Uh, it is good to keep in mind that most consular services are based on laws, agreements and conventions. Among them, for example, the Vienna Convention on, on Diplomatic Relations, the Vienna Convention on Consular uh, Relations, uh, bilateral agreements such as the one between the United States and Finland, the Finnish Consular Services Act, the Aliens Act, and so forth. So almost everything we do is actually has a legal basis in some way. We have very little room for deliberation ourselves. So that is always good to keep in mind. So what do we do in the consular team at the Consulate General? We assist Finnish, Finnish nationals in situations of crisis or in situations of distress during their temporary stay in the United States. That means that if somebody is visiting the US and falls victim of a crime, we may be of help to that person. We give advice to travelers about the local conditions and practices. We offer passport and ID card services for Finnish citizens. And that includes both those who visit, visit the US or who live here um, in the United States. We issue approximately 700 passports yearly, and I'd say maybe around a few dozen ID cards yearly. This year, again, has been a little bit different from, a, from any normal year. Um, we arrange um, absentee voting. Next elections coming up are the municipal elections in um, April this year. And those, um, and only those who have residence in Finland are allowed to vote in, in the next elections. Voting by mail is possible as well. And the mail voting kit can be ordered um, as per instructions on the Ministry of Justice website. Um, Going back to the tasks that we do, we give general advice regarding services carried out by other Finnish authorities and to some extent also perform tasks on their behalf. Those tasks are very limited, and, and, uh, but still we um, do have some, some services that in Finland would be naturally carried out by some other authorities. We perform notarial acts, among others, um, verification of signature, for example. Um, we offer also entry-related services to people intending to travel to Finland. We issue visas for non-Americans. It's good to remember that Americans, as tourists, do not require a visa to visit Europe or Finland in general. A 90-day visa-free stay is allowed. However, if you wish to stay longer than that 90-day period, 
and for example are planning to work in Finland, you would apply for a residence permit. And so we take in applications for residence permits, permits as well. The authority making decisions on the residence permits, however, is um, the Finnish Immigration Service. Next slide, please. All right, let's talk a little bit about the population information system. This is something that every Finn should be aware of and remember to keep their um, personal um, data or personal information up to date. There is something called the Population Information Act in Finland, and that actually obligates Finnish citizens citizens to notify the popula population information system keeper, which is DVB, um, the, the um, responsible authority, uh, of any changes to their personal data during their residence abroad. Also during their residence in Finland, obviously, but since everybody here is residing abroad, we talk about those matters now. Um, several rights and obligations arise or stem from um, the information that is found in the population um, system. For example, your right to passport, your, um, um, your uh, military service obligations, your rights as a citizen, uh, your rights to pension, estate, your um, liability to pay tax or your voting rights are actually all taken out of that system um, and so it is, as you can see, very important that your information is always up to date. Also, it's good to know that you may, for several purposes, get an extract, an official extract from um, the population information system, including your own information. So if you have any function that you need to prove, for example, that you are a citizen of such and such countries, then you may request um, an extract from the population information system for that purpose. Um, there is a small fee. Um, as far as I remember, it's somewhere around 10 euros nowadays. Next slide, please. And here, let's go over um, the obligations of Finnish citizens. You should always remember to register your children's births. When you have a new child in the family, remember to register him or her as a Finnish citizen into the system. If you get married abroad, if you get divorced, hopefully not, but if that happens, that is also very important to register. If there's a death in the family of a Finnish citizen, remember to um, report that information to the system as well, as well as all the address changes of more than three months. And if you do happen to get a new citizenship, if you are naturalized in, in, in the United States, for example, kindly um, report that um, new citizenship information also to the population register keeper. Something that we are often asked, um, in which form do the documents that you submit have to be? Kindly remember that an apostille authentication must be attached to all original documents. There is one exception, and that is the certificate of naturalization, with which you have to present your US passport when you register that information to the population information system. The documents that you wish to submit can be sent directly to DVV, which is the responsible authority, or to the Finnish foreign mission abroad. Um, that would be, for example, the Consulate General in Finland, um, of Finland in New York. There is always um, a form that has to be filled in as well with, that, um, with the submission of original documents. And those um, forms can be found on DVV website. You will have that website information on the last slide that, that we have here for you today. Um, it is also a very good idea to check once a year that your information is up to date. That once a year um, checkup can be done without any additional charges. You can check it as, as often as you want to, but there is a small fee um, if you do it more than once a year. 
you can do it by sending an email to DVV, DVV directly or logging onto their services with your Finnish bank access codes. That would, um, those you would have if you have a Finnish bank account and access that bank account regularly electronically using electronic services. Also in the new Finnish ID card, there's something called the citizen certificate that allows you to uh, ac access most Finnish electronic services online. Next slide, please. Thank you. And then let's talk a little bit about Finnish citizenship. The citizenship matters are um, handled by the Finnish Immigration Service, MIGRI for short. Uh, here is some information that we find that is useful for you to know. Finland accepts multiple citizenship. That means that you can be a um, citizen of more than one country and still be recognized as a citizen of Finland. Um, even if a Finnish citizen has more than one citizenship, the Finnish authorities will consider him or her to be a Finnish citizen both in Finland and abroad. This may not be true in all countries, so countries tend to view the concept of multiple nationality in different ways. Next slide, please. And continuing um, about the citizenship matters. Um, in Finland, uh, a child receives Finnish citizenship through his or her parents. This um, parentage principle, as it's called, is always applied according to the Nation Nationality Act in force at the, at the time of the child's birth. So if the child is born today, whatever Nationality Act is for in, in force today, those um, th th those uh, rules and regulations will be applied. The current Nationality Act entered into force on June 1st, 2003. And with that um, Nationality Act, Finland started recognizing also multiple citizenship. Before that date, you could not hold the Finnish nationality when you were naturalized as citizen of an other country. So for example, if you became a naturalized US citizen in 2000, you would automatically lose your Finnish citizenship at that time. Um, in 2003, starting from the date when the new, the current Nationality Act entered into force, there was, however, a two-year period in which you could um, submit a, a citizenship declaration and get your lost Finnish citizenship back without an additional fee. And that period of time was only two years. You can still do that nowadays. However, there is a fee to that. We will go to that in just a few moments. Um, the latest amendments were made to the Nationality Act in, um, on April 1st, 2019. And that was when the Maternity Act entered into force. Um, I will not go into further detail into the Maternity Act as I think it is not of very much interest to this audience. May we have the next slide, please? So here we have, um, hold on, I have my own pages here at home with a little more information. Let me turn the page. Um, some, um, or all the cases in which the Finnish citizenship uh, will automatically pass on to a child born to Finnish parents. So the most interesting cases is actually the two first ones, I would say. Um, the child's mother is a Finnish citizen. Obviously also if both parents are Finnish citizens, those parents would have a right to register their child as 
a Finnish citizen into the population information system, or if the child's father is a Finnish citizen and married to the child's mother. Say here uh, you have a Finnish man who is married to an American citizen and they have a child. That child is automatically a Finnish citizen and can be registered as such in the Finnish population system. Um, there are um, the a um, couple of other cases that are more rare and I will not read them through. I believe that this slideshow is will be available to you later on so um, you can um, with time check the other other uh, bullet points if you so wish. That information is also available on the national um, on the Finnish Immigration Service website. Let's go to the next slide please. So this is very important information for you to remember. Even if you have, even from birth, a Finnish citizenship and a US citizenship, you will automatically lose your Finnish citizenship when you turn 22. And that is obviously only in the case that you also hold a citizenship of another country and have not had sufficient connection to Finland. I will go to the sufficient connection in just a minute. Um, you should also know that the Finnish Immigration Service will notify you of the risk of losing your Finnish citizenship uh, by sending you a letter. And that's why, it's, uh, that's why it's extremely important that your address information is up to date in the population information system. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide, please. So here is some more details about what is meant by sufficient connection in order to keep your Finnish citizenship when you turn 22. So firstly, if you were born in Finland and your residence is in Finland at the time you reach the age of 22. Also, if you have lived in Finland or another Nordic country, for a total of seven years before you reach the age of 22. And then thirdly, if you meet one of the following conditions, uh, you have applied for a Finnish passport or identity card before or during the, the year that you are still 21 years, but over 18 years of age. If you are completing or have completed the Finnish military service or civil service, or in the case of women, if you um, have taken part or have completed the voluntary military service for women. Um, if you have been granted Finnish citizenship on application or on declaration, or if you have given a notice to a Finnish mission abroad or DVV directly of your wish to retain your Finnish citizenship after you turn 22 years. That is a simple letter, the last one, that the um, point number four, is a simple letter you write yourself, including your personal information, your Finnish ID number, if you have that at hand. Um, include your wish to retain your citizenship, sign it personally and send it either to DVV or to us, for example. Okay, let us go to the next slide, please and a little bit about citizenship declaration and application. Those are for those who currently are not Finnish citizens. Those are handled, those, the, the declaration and application are handled by the Finnish um, immigration service. The um, Finnish citizenship may be obtained on declaration by um, a child born abroad and out of wedlock for uh, to a Finnish man or a Finnish non-birth mother, an adopted child between 12 and 17 years of age, a former Finnish citizen, a Nordic citizen, and a young person between uh, the ages of 18 and 22 who has lived in Finland long enough. Here at the Consulate General, we by far uh, encounter 
customers that fall in the third category, a former Finnish citizen. Those may be people who, for example, forgot to notify um, DVB, the Finnish Population Register Keeper, of their wish to retain their citizenship and as a consequence have lost their Finnish citizenship. They can get it back um, on declaration. Um, the declaration process is quite straightforward. It is based on law only and there is basically no deliberation process by the Finnish Immigration Service. Um, once you submit your declaration, you are also required to uh, make a personal visit to the consulate um, or the embassy of the country of your residence, or it can be also at a service point in Finland. The declaration can be submitted abroad. And something that we are also very often asked whether one can get Finnish citizenship based on one's grandparents' Finnish citizenship. Unfortunately, that is not possible in Finland. So if your grandparents were Finnish nationals, but your parents weren't, and as a consequence, you were not born Finnish citizen, then you would not be able to get Finnish citizenship on declaration. Can we go to the next slide, please? And then um, one can also get Finnish citizenship on application. Application process is a little bit longer. It is also, it involves um, some deliberation on the part of the responsible authority. You must also, in order to um, get a positive decision on your application, you must meet certain criteria or certain requirements. Namely, established identity, that means that you, you can be identified. Um, in the U.S., that would be quite easily done. Um, most people do have some sort of um, identification available, um, a U.S. passport, for example, and can be ident identified reliably. You also must be 18 years of age or more. You must possess sufficient language skills in, in Finnish or Swedish. You must also meet the um, criteria of a number of years of residence in Finland. More in detail, that means for the past years you must have lived in Finland or seven years total after turning 15 years of age. By integrity, we mean that you have not committed any major crimes, you don't have any restraining orders or so forth. You've also, uh, you must prove that you have sufficient means of support Actually, you have to list all your sources of income for the whole, for the entire period of required residence. That means for the five years, for the past five years or the se seven years total, if you have not lived in Finland for consecutive years. And um, the last one is you must have fulfilled payment obligations. obligations. That means that you have no outstanding taxes, fines, uh, overdue loans, payments, and so forth. And the um, citizenship application can only be submitted in Finland. And that is because there is this uh, residence requirement. And if you currently are considering that, you should also know that we cannot, at the Consulate General, we cannot unfortunately take those applications from you. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. We have also in Finland something that is called determination of citizenship. That means that you can basically ask the Finnish Immigration Service to determine what citizenship you are considered to hold by the Finnish authorities. Um, I would say that the categories one and five are the most common ones from at least our viewpoint. You want to know if you are currently a Finnish citizen. Um, it may have happened, for example, without you knowing that you have 
when turning 22, you have lost, lost your Finnish citizenship. You come in for a Finnish passport, and then we find out that your citizenship information is actually not up to date in the population information system. And then we need to do something that is called determination of citizenship. Um, you may want to know if you have ever been a Finnish citizen, and that would be category five or number five on this list. Um, you may, in some cases, want to know if the child in your custody is or has been a Finnish citizen. Um, so there are some cases in which you may want to opt before taking any other steps regarding your passport or other um, actions to um, know whether you are actually still a Finnish citizen. If you find out that you have been a Finnish citizen, but are currently not, then you can go through the um, declaration process if you wish to get your Finnish citizenship back. Um, there is, um, let's go to the next slide at this point. Thank you. So I'm sorry if you can hear my papers here. So um, if you come in for a passport application and we, we notice that, that your citizenship information is not up to date, then we would request a determination of citizenship on your behalf. That would be free of charge for you. You can also at any time do this uh, request for determination of citizenship on your own by filling in the appropriate form on the Finnish Immigration Service web pages. The cost for that action is 100 euros. Um, and the payment is asked to be submitted electronically online using any major credit card. Um, there is no need to come and visit the Consulate General, General or any other mission um, in the US. So that can be done just basically um, um, online using the appropriate form and actually uh, you don't submit it electronically, you would send it um, by mail or uh, by email to the Finnish Immigration Service. Um, clear de uh, detailed instructions are available on the Finnish Immigration Service web website as well. And let's go to the next slide. And um, here, let me go over some um, some details about the Finnish military service. The responsible authority here is the Finnish Defense Forces. As per, as per law, all Finnish men are liable for military service and women can apply for military service. Anna disappeared. Um, we'll get back. No. Please hold. Mika or Maria, will we are we waiting for Hanna or are you will you take over? I think it's best to wait for Hanna to come back unless somebody from Hannah's team would like to take over and continue. Hannah is coming back right away. Okay, excellent. Excellent. We always have these, uh, these issues. You have to tell your children not to play video games on a Wi-Fi. <laughs> While, while we have uh, webinars going on. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have any please hold music going on. Maria, is there any questions that you, you might want to ask at this moment? Uh, um, maybe the team can answer so that we don't have 
have uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, there were several that have been covered, like the grandparent question. Several people were wondering about that, um, which apparently they can't. They can't if they're grandparents. Was finished. That doesn't automatically apply. Um, there are several people wondering about uh, because of the COVID restrictions. Normally, with, for um, for getting their passports renewed, and the consulates have been closed, and um, there's so they they they're wondering what to do to get their passports renewed if they can't go into the consulate, and you also aren't able to uh, apply remotely. So, what do you have any suggestions for? This situation for passport renewal. Could you yeah, ask hi. the target? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hi, this is Tarja Silverman. Uh, just wanted to say that uh, you we are open. We are open Mondays and Wednesdays. So and there's a there's a, a web, uh, website you can make a uh, uh, schedule appointment. So we are open. So I don't know where why they don't think we are not open. And the Washington DC is open, so is Los Angeles as well. But they have to come in that's person true. now. That's true. Okay. Well, that's good to know that you are open. And, um, but then if they live farther away, there's someone in Alaska, someone in uh, Oregon and Washington. So um, is the, the remote passport machine operating during COVID? No, it's not. Unfortunately, we cannot do that. It's a safe reason okay. for everybody. Right. And then there's uh, there's questions about <clears throat> traveling to Finland. Another popular one that's come in also in the emails is about going to Finland. Um, and um, so for example, one of them would be if you are if you are a Finnish citizen and you have American born children who are registered as Finnish citizens as well, um, but they don't have the American passports currently. Can they go to Finland and return from Finland on the, their Finnish passports? That's, uh, that's the American authorities, the U.S. immigration, okay. if they're returning to fi from Finnish passport to Finland, I mean to USA, then they should have either, at the moment, they should have either some kind of visa or green card or the U.S. passport. Yeah, the Finnish born mother has a green card. The children are born in the U.S. but also have the dual and they currently only have Finnish passports. They haven't That's what I say, US that they passport. should have the okay. American yeah. passport. We recommend okay. it to them to have it. Okay. Um, there are, so there's lots of questions about the um, they get more intricate, but since we haven't completed the presentation, I don't know how many we want to cover. Um, so, uh, so there's people with uh, uh, there's so there's there's so many. How do you okay? So let's how about this? How how do you apply for a Finnish identity card? You have to buy uh, personally coming as uh, uh, same as you buy, apply Finnish passport. So you have to come to the consulate or embassy to apply. Okay, so any kind of these you have to do these uh, identity related yes. things. Yes, unfortunately, the... this time is the hard. Yeah, but you do. Okay, then there's this one similar. How does one use a Finnish ID card to log on to? DVV to check one's info is a special card reader required. That identity card has that uh, information. Uh, it has information inside, and uh, when you go DVV, they will inform you what to do there and how to get you information and what, how you're going to use that card to get you information. Okay, and how long is the identity card valid? It's five years as well as passport. Okay. Um, I have a question. Do you need the identity card to, to get the DVV information or can you, do you have that same information in your passport? You can, uh, as um, uh, Hannah was saying, that you can uh, 
sent them an email. Okay. Um, then there's questions about people, for example, I'm a dual citizen and I, and I am entitled to a pension from Finland. What are the steps to receive it once I retire? Is this out of the scope from now or is there any simple question? You can't, you have to live in Finland to get the pension. You have to have, have been working there. You can't do it here, no. Um, okay, so then along the lines of the, uh, the, the, the passport, of, um, I have, I am a Finnish citizen living in the U.S. with children uh, that are Finnish citizens. We only have U.S. passports. What is the benefit of having a Finnish passport as well? I have four children, so it gets expensive. Yeah, you'll be able to travel to Finland and all other European countries. You may be able to stay there. You can study there. That's easier. And all other benefits, it's there is available for you as a dual citizen. But I can see that uh, there's a lot of money to go to uh, to uh, apply for passport at the same time. Do you know the cost of the passport? How much does it cost? The apply? passport is hundred and sixty-five dollars. That's a uh, normal passport. But if you want an expedited passport, then that's twenty dollars extra. And that you will get it in one week. And how much is it with without the expedition? How, how much? It's hundred and sixty. I, mean, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> how how long does it take? Uh, two weeks. It's a normal passport. It takes about two weeks to get it. Okay. Well, it looks like Hanna is back, so um, I will take more questions at the end and let let, let Hanna continue. You're mute. You're mute. Unmute yourself. Yes, I'm. I, I'm. I am so sorry about that. There was nothing I could do. My computer just decided to stop working. I had to log on, uh, and it was specifically slow. Uh, the login process tonight. I don't know why that happened. Um, sometimes it happens to our computers. So sorry about that. I really apologize. Here I am, no and uh, we're, <laughs> yeah, that's something that. You, yeah, nothing I could do about it. All right, so thank you, Tarja, for taking over um, with um, you know some of the questions. And let's go back to the military service issues. And we are actually approaching the end of um, our presentation. Uh, and then we can take some more questions. So um, I was saying um, before I, I got cut off that Finnish men have to complete the military service and women may complete the military service on a voluntary basis. The military service, even though we call it such, it can be complete, completed either as armed or unarmed, unarmed military service or non-military service that is also called civil service. Um, the age of service is between 18 and 29 years of age. Uh, one must know that um, Failure to obey the call-up notice uh, is a criminal offense punishable according to the Finnish Conscript Act. Um, so, for example, if you are registered in the Finnish population system only as a Finn, but do hold also U.S. nationality, but that is not visible in the Finnish population system, you will be called for military service. And there, you know, um, you would have to update your information because the next point saying that according to the bilateral agreement between Finland and the United States, a dual citizen is exempt from military service as long as he permanently resides in the United States. So if you do have two nationalities, you do know, one being the Finnish and the other being the U.S., you would not need to go and complete military service in Finland as long as you stay, as long as you live in the U.S. Um, however, if you plan to go to Finland and study between the ages of 18 and 29, you may still be called in if you move to Finland for your studies, for example, while you are between the, that age range. Um, if 
you wish to serve in the Finnish military, but are a dual national, you still may do that. And in that case, we um, advise you to co uh, contact the Finnish Defense Forces directly or the appropriate regional office. That contact information can be found on the Defense Forces webpage. And um, let us go to the next slide, please. So as far as I understood, people have been interested in knowing where we have honorary consulates. So these are all the honorary consulates that we have in the US. Um, they seem to be in order of alph alphabetical order based on the cities in which they are. The same information is available, including their contact information, also on the Consulate General webpage. So please log in and take a look if you need um, any information regarding honorary consulates in the US. And then let's go to the last page of the presentation. That there is some um, important or what we consider to be important contact information. First of all, the Consulate General in New York. Uh, there you have our email address, your phone number, our visiting address, and remember it's by appointment only, and as well as our web page. We have, in my opinion, very good web pages with um, all this information that we have shared with you tonight. And so, go and take a look if there's anything that you need more information on. Um, then there is the um, Finnish Defense Forces web pages, the address to those. If you need any more information or contact information regarding um, their services or, as said, their regional offices and so forth. The Finnish Immigration Service that was responsible for citizenship matters and residence permits can be found um, at the address listed um, as well. And the Finnish Digital and Population Data Services Agency, there's one word missing there, agency, but that doesn't matter. Their web pages can, can be found uh, behind that link. And there, for example, you would go for all your um, updated population uh, data matters. And last but not least, during the times of the pandemic, we have had a lot of Finns and Americans alike requesting information about restrictions on travel. And here we have the web pages of the Border Guard in Finland. They have just updated their um, restrictions um, on their pages and there is their phone number which if I remember correctly is Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Finnish time and then their email address is obviously um, functional 24-7. You can send them questions regarding any, uh, any issues that you wish to ask them they tend to be quite quick in answering. And then we have a nice picture on the last slide. And with that picture, that is actually a picture taken out of our consulate general's window. Uh, we admire the sunset every time there are no clouds, it's not overcast and the view is quite spectacular. Um, with this picture, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would also like to thank the consular team, Rino, Tarja, Anne, for cooperation in putting together um, this presentation as well, and um, just in general in doing a very good job um, together as a team. Thank you very much. Okay. So this concludes the presentation uh, uh, of today and we will continue with the Q&A. Um, so if any questions, please use the Q&A function to send them in now and uh, Maria will continue um,
coordinating and read the questions. We have a team of experts from the consulate online to answer, so uh, go for it. And um, obviously the preference is for questions of today's topic. However, please note that um, we will review all questions and if we don't answer them today, uh, we will log them and, and figure out a way to, to uh, uh, get answers to you. So we have the entire team here available, so go at it. All right, thank you for that presentation. There was a lot that I learned as well. So, um, all right, I'm just gonna go through these. Some of them, I'll, I'll try to see if we answered them, but um, they might be a little bit randomly in order. So okay. bear with us. So uh, first one here we have is, where can I find more information on the Maternity Act? Um. I would say just you. Uh, there, there is a question a little bit out, out of my out of our scope, but anyway, um, I would just say uh, googling. Uh, if you have, if the person in question has a more specific question, we also have a legal team in in at the MFA in Finland. So if we get a more specific question, we might be able to ask that. Um, the, the basic contents um, I found just by Googling Maternity Act Finland and the date that it entered in, into force was April 1st, 2019. So if that doesn't help at all, then I would suggest send us a question to the email address you saw on the contact info page and we can see if we can send it on for somebody to um, at the MFA to answer for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, what if my parents were born in Finland and emigrated in the 1950s? My father became a naturalized US citizen in 1962. Not sure what my mom did. My dad has since died. My mom is still alive. I guess this is to get their, their own. So citizenship yes so I, I i assume that the person wants to know whether they are a finnish citizen um so i would say since the citizenship matters uh are uh responsibility of the finnish immigration service and that question is actually quite complicated because several laws have been enforced um during you know from the from the time where the parents of the person um were born and, and naturalized here in the US, several laws may enter into question. And that would be actually a very good case to, um, to submit a request for citizenship, um, determination of citizenship status. If, if you go a little bit like towards the end of the slideshow, we talked about that. Still a little bit further, there we go. So um, there, you know, I, I, I would tell the person to go and see on the Finnish Immigration Service website, um, go to permits and citizenship, and then take from there determination of citizenship and see how that is actually submitted. Submit all the necessary information and, and they would be able to answer whether the customer in question is now a Finnish citizen, whether he or she has ever been a Finnish citizen. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, this is mostly on voting. I'm not sure if this, um, uh, but uh, when will the national election voting be available for electronic voting? Okay, um, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure, so by electronic voting, the the, 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 um, the interested person here means like you would go online and cast your vote, I assume. Um, as far as I know, not in the coming years yet. I don't know if Mika or Maria have any more knowledge than I have. I think that there are some issues with the security of electronic voting um, as far as the Finnish authorities have been um, 
telling us. So I don't see that happening in the in the in the coming few years. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. After the age of twenty-two, are there other points in time when the citizenship is scheduled to expire? No. Once once you um, once you submit your letter or uh, your passport application before you turn twenty-two. And uh, you know, by doing that, make your wish to retain your Finnish citizenship. Then it's for life. Okay. Unless obviously the Nationality Act changes at some point, which we cannot know yet. And just one important point, which I forgot to mention at the beginning, that kindly do remember that the information that we give you right now is valid right now, but not necessarily a year from now. There might be some changes to it, and uh, so. To be up to date, you may always check with us or go to our web pages to, to view the most current information or any changes to information there may have been. Okay, thank you. Um, how do I establish my identity without a current Finnish bank account info on the DVV website? I have my old Finnish ID number and my bank info is with Posti Banki. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I would I would contact the um, DVV by email and posing the question. They will be able to answer what is needed to to establish one's identity when um, you know um, asking them, for example, population data uh, related questions. Um, also, I would like to advertise at this point despite it is for a fee, that the um, new identity card does have the citizen certificate function, which allows you to log into the services, electronic services of Finnish authorities. So in case that is ever something you might consider, I actually would like to warmly recommend it if, if your, for example, bank access codes are old expired or you can no longer use them for some reason or do not have those at all. That's good advice because I'm in that same boat. I don't have the bank account. Oh. <laughs> all right. So then please come in for uh, an ID card. That's, and speaking of that, so just verifying, even if you have a Finnish passport, but no ID card, you still have to go into the um, the consulate in person for the ID card, no matter what. Yes, so, so so the ID card application, yes, is is submitted in person as well. Yes, okay, we need you fine. to make make a visit. Yes. Okay. Yes, unfortunately, we've been asked this uh, the question of whether one can apply um, via email, via mail in general for a new passport. Unfortunately, Finnish law doesn't allow for that, and so we're sorry about that. So someone's um, referring to the question earlier about the uh, the, the um, retirement and uh, not getting paid if you're here. But so they're asking, do you mean that a dual citizen who has worked in Finland, let's say 25 years and is entitled to pension cannot get it paid if they are living in the U USA? Okay, is Daria online? I think that she might actually know the answer to this. Now, this was when you were offline, um, something about the pension. So there. Yeah, there, I, I yeah. think that Daria already yeah. answered some of that. Yes. Can, can you yeah. repeat, Daria, your answer? If you have, yeah, of course, if you have work in Finland, then you'll be able to get your benefits. And then you have to contact Kela for that information. But the previous question was that if you're working, if you if you have pension, okay, how do you get the pension? But you didn't mention that you have been working there. Mm -hmm. then that's totally different case now. So you have to yes. contact Kela in Finland. Okay, yeah, because somebody else is asking about how do they receive it if they have worked in Finland before they moved to the US. So that's to answer her question as well. That means they have to contact Kela for that prior pension. That's right, right, and, right. and yes. Okay, thank you. Um, well, we have Elia, um, uh, so um, actually, 
I'm doing a film about Eliel Saarinen. His son was Eero Saarinen, born in Kirkonomi in 1910. I would like to have dual citizenship for multiple reasons. My father was Eero Saarinen, so um, Eric Saarinen is asking. <laughs> okay, so so um, if the um, so if the per person is no longer a Finnish citizen but has been a Finnish citizen, there's the declaration process. Uh, if the person has never been a Finnish citizen, which is not possible for me to answer here, um, and may maybe not ever, because um, those are usually lawyers who go through the uh, laws that were applicable applicable at um, at different times. Um, if the person has never been a Finnish citizen and th therefore cannot go through the uh, determining, um, sorry, the declaration process, then, you know, living a, some, a certain number of years in Finland uh, and then uh, making the application would be one way to go about it. Okay. Um, that is not very detailed, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, um, but I, I would um, advise to go to the, um, Finnish Immigration Service website and look through the requirements of citizenship in general. And then if necessary, do the determination of the citizenship status that we talked about. Sounds like there's several, of, oh, go ahead, Anne Marie. Yeah, it's generally like if your parents have been or are, or, or if your parents were Finnish citizens at the time of the, your birth, then you could apply for your for your own Finnish citizenship, but it doesn't go generation back. It's only like your parents. If your parents were Finnish, then you have a chance. Yes, correct. So if you were born and your parents, um, according to the Nationality Act, enforced then, if they were Finnish citizens, you most most likely have been a Finnish citizen, even if you maybe never were registered. So the you know the act of registering one's information in the population system doesn't actually, you know, whether you do it or not, it doesn't, you know, take away your citizenship in any way. So if if your mom was a citizen when you were born, and the law at the time stated that a, a child born to a Finnish mom gets the Finnish citizenship, then you have been a Finnish citizen, and even if you have lost it, you can get it back by declaration. And the declaration process is, well, it's still, I think it's electronic application or electronic declaration is 150 euros, but it's still much less than the application. And if that's of interest, yeah, one could go through that process. Yes. Okay. Um, so there's some similar questions about it and, um... And also one more about the pension aspect. Um, so if you haven't worked in Finland, you don't get the pension. Then is that um, if you have if you live, live there during retirement age but haven't contributed in taxes? Um, Tarja can answer, but that's my belief that if you never work for in Finland or for a Finnish company or government. I don't think that you have accrued any pension to collect. No, no. That's my, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the same same answer. You have yeah. to be okay. working work there. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Just clarifying, making sure some of these questions. Um, so so now for somebody who had the grandparents, I'm interested in living in Finland and wondering if I can arrange this through a residential permit since my grandparents were Finnish citizens. So it doesn't give you any assistance in getting, being able to move there. So it, it, it is possible to apply for a residence permit based on, um, I, I, that's totally um, possible. Uh, what are the chances of getting a residence permit based on that? I, I cannot say, but uh, that kind of application can be submitted. Okay. Yes. Um, if I get my residency permit for Finland, do I have to move there within a certain time frame? 
Okay, here, uh, maybe some of my colleagues of the team can help. I think that it, it, normally the residence permit is issued for a reason where you would actually also state the t period of time that you wish to stay in Finland. Whether there is a strict time limit, um, I think that the first permit is usually issued for a year. Um, you can apply for or renew your permit only in Finland. So that means that by that time, when it's time to renew, at least you have to be in Finland. And kindly, um, Daria maybe or Anne in the team, um, maybe Hi. you have something to add. Hi, it's Anne here. Yeah, you are correct, Hanna. Like, uh, normally the first residence permit, it's for one or two years and you need to renew the permit in Finland. So at least you have to move there before that. <laughs> Yeah, and usually you have to, in renewing your residence permit card, you have to also prove that the basis on which you got it are still valid. So if, if you have a student permit, you still have to be a student, registered student somewhere and be studying there. If you haven't done any of those studies, obvious, obviously the basis is not there. You can also have a different basis when you renew your card. So if you study it first and then got, an, got a job and, and, and plan to continue working in Finland, then the basis for that residence permit, permit would be different. But still, you know, you have to have some kind of basis. It, how it normally doesn't work that you get your permit and then you live here in the US and use that permit just to come and go. Um, um, whenever you wish, I mean, then you wouldn't at least be able to renew that card because usually it requires some kind of reason why you want to, you know, you want to move to Finland. Why do you want to move to Finland? And then you justify the, 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 um, the reason why you need that residence permit. Okay. I have a question about that just to follow up. So with the residence permit, okay. you have to have a job or something like in the US, you have to usually have a job that requires it. But in Finland, if you state the reason why you have to be there, does that mean that there needs to be? Because I know you said earlier in the presentation something about the being um, having to be able to financially, but that's for the citizenship, but for yeah, that, that was for the citizenship for, you know, depending on what category you apply in. But if if you um, are interested in that, you can go and see the different categories. For example, if, if you are applying because you have a job in Finland, then you would obviously be getting a salary in Finland, which would take care of your means of subsist, um, subsistence. Um, if you go to study, then you have to prove that you have certain amount at your perusal for the whole duration of your uh, stay. So yeah, there you have to, depending on the category that you apply in, you will either have to prove that, or you will have to prove that you have a work contract stating what salary you are going to get. So there is usually that requirement in place. So even for residency? you have to show. Um, so what do you mean by residency? I'm not sure if I oh, understood, so just, understood the question. So if you want to apply for a resident permit. Uh, yes, know. yes, yes. So either you would be working in Finland and getting a salary, which means that you, as you are there every month, you get a certain amount of money to, to maintain yourself. Or if you go as a student, then you have to have a certain certain amount of money per month during the whole duration of your stay in order to show that you're not actually relying on Finnish social services without having that right. Okay. So, so th th that is my get my personal interpretation of why that, that requirement is in place. There might be a c category, for example, maybe a, f a, a family member of a Finnish citizen, I don't remember by heart, what the requirements for all the categories are. Maybe if um, Daria or Anne want to jump in, feel free at any point. Um, but I, I, I think in most applications, you actually do have to prove something. Yes. Okay. 
Um, so if my kids have active Finnish passports their entire lives, reaching the age of 18, is that all that's required to maintain the citizenship? And so a letter, uh, uh, it's a little unclear how it's written. Um, so it's just a, a letter requesting to keep it. Is that all they need to send in? Um, uh, yes, yes. That's correct. Or they can come in, you know, when they turn 18, um, they come in for a new passport. And that's it. And when they, when they apply for a passport, then that is already, uh, um, you know, meeting the requirement of keeping the citizenship uh, when they turn 22. Yes. And so then... It, but yes, the, the, the letter is sufficient. Yes, correct. And also if they live... Oh. At the age of 18, they became uh, adults. Uh, it's not like if they applied it, applied the passport when they were 17 and got it, that would not apply, but you have to be 18 or older. Correct, correct, yeah. yes. You have to be between 18 and 22, and it has to be before you turn 22. If you're 22 and one day, then it's too late already. Okay, and then you have to do the declaration if you want. Then if you want the citizenship back, then you would have to go through the declaration process, yes. Okay. And then, so the same um, asker has, uh, also if they live in the US their entire lives, are their children eligible to a Finnish citizenship? citizenship? <laughs> That's a difficult <laughs> word. <laughs> um, yes, yes, if, if they're born to, if, if one of their parents, according to the Nationality Act, you know, if, if, if their parents are Finnish citizens, if, if there's a, yeah, so it's uh, it doesn't matter where you live if your parents are Finnish citizens, and then you, you would still get it. As long as this Nationality Act is in force, if there are changes to it, then that might change. But like um, in difference um, uh, from the US, for example, where you most in most cases get the citizenship if you are born in the United States. In Finland, that doesn't apply. In Finland, it's the parents' nationality that would determine whether you get the Finnish citizenship or not. So yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Um, can we assume that this information also applies to citizenship issues related to the Åland Islands? Um, okay, that's a tough one. Um, I'm not sure if citizenship wise all and islands is any different so it would be nice to have that question in writing and we could actually um if it can be a little bit clearer like uh does it mean that all and island citizenship and finnish citizenship are considered same so we could maybe find out that for the the person interested as far as I understand, all and island citizens are still considered Finnish citizens, even though the region per se has a, a special status and special rights. But I don't think that the citizenship issues are any different from just a normal Finn. Okay. But we can find that out for the interested person. Thank you. Um, my family did not pass on the language to me. Um, so uh, my family did not pass on the language to me. I have looked at a taste of Finnish from the University of Helsinki and Duolingo. Is there a program that you recommend if you want to learn Finnish? Hmm. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I cannot answer that. I don't know if Maria might have or Mika more knowledge. There was this uh, webinar on education, which I unfortunately did not attend myself, but were there any information on Finnish language courses there? No. I, I would say that any university course would be okay, I guess, yeah. I, I would just add that like, we have we have lots of um, Finnish uh, like Suomi Koulus or Finnish schools where they have adult classes, so that might be an easy way to get started. Uh, but um, uh, then you mm -hmm. can you can uh, check online courses. Uh, I, I know that in the DC area specifically, uh, they have a very active um, adult class. Uh, um, okay, that's a very good idea. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. maybe I could add, um, I don't think there was anything about this topic on the um, education webinar, but I believe maybe a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, we compiled a list at the consulate. So I'm uh, not sure if it's still relevant or if I can even find it anywhere, but uh, we've had that information uh, even on our old websites. The, the new websites don't have that information, but but uh, yeah. if there's somebody who is interested in knowing more, you can contact us at the consulate and we can try to find the information yeah. for you. Actually, you are right, Maria. Thank you. Um, I remember actually uh, seeing that information just recently uh, and my colleague Tarja had listed a few universities giving edu um, you know courses of Finnish language. Um, I believe that at least I could find that, and Tarja certainly has that somewhere um, in her in her um, um, e archives. So certainly that person could send us an email, and we could um, help him or her with that. Okay. Um, somebody's there's a couple remigration residence issues that could. So they're asking, could the remigration residence be discussed? Okay, that's, I'm not sure I understand the question. Is it possible to specify a little bit? Um, that's all that question, one particular question asked, but there's another one um, okay. that says, is, if there is time in this Q&A session, could the panel discuss the remigration residence permit? For example, how long is it valid for what documentation is required to prove a parent or grandparent Finnish citizenship and is a permanent address in Finland required. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that would definitely be. I mean, to the question whether this panel can discuss it, um, I I could say on my part that I am not able to discuss it, and I I believe that not, none of the other panelists are either, since we are not expert on those issues. That would be definitely a question for the Finnish uh, immigration service. And on their website, they also have an email address, for example. They do have phone numbers as well, but they tend to be uh, uh, functional like a couple of hours in the morning time, Finnish time, and that might make it difficult to call them. But um, I'd say that, you know, sending them email if the information is not available on their website directly. I'm, I'm not quite sure what is meant by this question, but I... I I am certainly not able to discuss that topic at all. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Maria, uh, yeah. Maria, one question. It's it's seven thirty right now. Um, I I would ask audience, unfortunately, not to submit any more questions, and we can try to run through what we have on the docket right now. Otherwise, we will be here till the midnight, and we will never. There's, there's always going to be more, and, and, uh, and trust me, we will be, uh, you can always connect with the office, our Finlandia Foundation office, uh, uh, for further questions, and we can pass them on to the consulate even, uh, uh, and, and help you out uh, if possible. But uh, right now, let's try to run down the docket that we have right now, and uh, otherwise, nobody will get home tonight. Yeah. That's true. There's a lot of questions and thank you all for your active participation on my behalf as well. Um, I do wanted to ask a question here because um, th there's a, are you able to answer anything related to the taxation? Because one of the things, there's questions about um, what, what's the, uh, what are some of the benefits or are there any concerns to consider about having dual citizenship, um, especially because the United States requires taxation even if you're living in Finland so to pay taxes to the U.S. that's one of the common things people wonder about and one particular question if you're able to answer that is uh, for example if there's something that is tax exempt in the U.S. like an inheritance um, what do you do with Finnish for example Finnish inheritance that you know taxation wise do you have any anything you could add about these issues um, Mm -hmm. Okay, um, if Tarja is still online, do you want to take this at all? I think that you might have more complete information than I do. 
Well, tax issues are personal issues, so I don't think we'll be able to answer any of those questions. So the best bet is either take a, a heritage in issues, you should take care, contact some lawyers, and the tax issue, Finland, Veropistetti, because those are really issues that we are not familiar at all. And those are personal issues, it's everybody's different. So I do recommend them to contact directly to the, the right authorities, not us. Yeah, um, that, that makes sense. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to, there's, I got a notice from our colleague that there's a list of Finnish language resources at, the, at our Finlandia Foundation national website for those of you who are interested in um, language. I should have known this to say myself, but, uh, but yeah, so if you have any language related questions, we actually do provide a, a resource for that. So just visit our finlandiafoundation.org website if you want any more information about that. Um, somebody asked about the Finnish. So it, are there benefits of becoming a resident in addition to being a pre-requirement for citizenship? I guess this is if you're coming from um, the US. So are there benefits of becoming a resident in addition to being like you have to have be there um, for citizenship, so. Um, so by benefits, so I'm, I'm not sure um, I understood the question. So uh, residence is different from citizenship. You can have certain benefits by being a resident a certain time. Again, this is a different authority who would be responsible for the benefits. As we talked about pension, the same authority uh, is responsible for most benefits actually. Um, so, it would be a good idea to ask them. Usually in order to receive any benefits, you have to live in the country for a while. Um, what that while means right now, it could be six months, but I'm not sure. Um, in order to get like a sort of like a municipality of residence, which would entitle you to get some benefits at least. Most of the benefits in Finland are based actually on residence and not the nationality or not the citizenship, if that answers the question at all. Okay. Um, do you have any resources that you can mention, for example, for those who are thinking of taking on the US citizenship in addition to the Finnish citizenship? What's the best resource? Or what are in, like a place with information to take into consideration? Okay, Tarja, again, are you there? Um, I do not know myself, but Tarja might have some experience on this. Yeah, I, I didn't quite get that question. Please, uh, can you repeat? Uh, where could I find information for the things to take into consideration when thinking about taking another citizenship, U.S., in addition to the Finnish one? Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, everybody's different, so it's uh, hard to say <laughs> what is what is you prefer to take and what is you what do you want from from this citizenship. Everybody sees it different. I think it's very actually a really personal questions, if you can see it. But benefits are if are they Finnish citizen or American. They're Finnish and they're considering whether to be a U.S. Oh. citizenship citizen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I, I think that they mean here that you know what what things to consider, you know what benefits you would get still from one citizenship being one citizen and that citizen of the other country and what would you lose, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Mm. It's it's quite so, a personal question, but it's still you got. I mean, true. True. Debate. Yeah. Yeah. The, you can vote as an American, and, then and you, you could have have vote you also know. as a Finn. Yeah, and you don't have to yes. worry about your city. I mean, renew your uh, green card or your visas, or if that's you, and you are never kicked out of the country. And <laughs> so those are some of the benefits. But yeah, everybody's systems a little different, so I'm not quite 
know how to that. You have to think about yourself, those questions, I will say. Sorry. Yeah, and in this day and age when a lot of people are actually moving back to Finland, the taxation I think is one of the uh, the issues that you might one might consider and looking into one's particular situation. Definitely, yeah, that's true, yeah. Because you will always be liable unless you have, you find somebody who can work with you to figure out the solution, how to do it. Um, you are not liable for the taxes, but you are liable to file the taxes. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, I think so. Because I've been, to, I have some follow they are friends who have been struggling with this issue because yeah, they, they, they have, do to, have pay. to file as long as you you have u.s citizenship wherever you live you have to file taxes but then there are these treaties you never you are never paid twice you, you, you don't yeah. you have to pass the numbers but you are not paid twice that's True. actually yeah. good to know so that the actual payment that that could be helpful for several of us who have thought of this Issue. But you have to file. Like IRS yeah. is not letting you off the hook. Like they, they will ask you to file. <laughs> well, that's that's helpful. Um, so there's there's this was probably covered a little bit. But what types of services do the honorary consulates provide for Finnish citizens living in the U.S. permanently? So you kind of it's in the the some of it, but I don't know if you want to expand on that at all. So, so we we didn't really go through those services. They they are, let's say, apart from you know what they do for our uh, companies and uh, different events and cultural events and so forth. I will not go into that. But as for consular services, they can verify your signature. You can um, make a verified copy for you. So stamp a copy for you. The, in certain cases, they can identify you. So, for example, if, if you submit a um, citizenship declaration, you can go to an honorary, consul, honorary consulate to, to be identified. That requires a personal visit, but it doesn't have to be with us. It can be with, a, with an honorary consul. And uh, honorary consuls also, I mean, in certain cases, and this would not apply so much for dual nationals, but maybe those visiting um, from Finland, um, if there's somebody who is in trouble, they might be of assistance to those people. Um, so those, I would say, are the most important services. I, I just wondering if there are others that I would um, want to mention, maybe those, they, they, they can they can write you a certificate of life. So they can kind of, if you go to them and they, they um, attest having seen you and identified you and you, you, you are alive in front of them that you have actually presented yourself um, in front of them and and some authorities require those as well that might be true for some uh, inheritance issues in Finland and so forth so th those are mainly the, the the tasks that that they can perform uh, limited notarial services okay um, so U.S. renews passports by mail. Why can't Finland do the same when you already have an old or current valid passport and all digital information? Traveling to a consulate poses extra expenses and especially during COVID makes traveling precautious, precarious rather. Yeah, so we are aware of this problem. Um, unfortunately, the Finnish passport law uh states that you have to be identified in a certain way and this cannot happen if you mail in your passport application so there is it, it's not that we want to be difficult but we are tied by by the laws in force and therefore you know have there's nothing we can do about it i we do understand the situation and in times of covid traveling is not very easy. Unfortunately, um, yeah. Why the law is such, I cannot answer, unfortunately. 
And just add on that, that the biometrics on the passport, it's only last five years. So you have to renew them. And that's how yeah. this passport has been done. So that's one of the reasons as well. And it's like Hannah say, unfortunately, everybody has to come in person. And it's going to be, it's difficult at the time. Yeah. yeah. Passport and you are outside of the US and you have to apply a passport. Like if I'm in Finland and I need to apply for my US passport, I do have to go to the consulate. I can't do it by mail. So if you are in Finland and you are Finn, you can do this by mail. So, but if you're outside of yeah, Finland, online, so it's not any sure. different than all the other uh, countries necessarily. Um, okay, so. They're starting to, all the questions, there's a lot of some, some very similar questions. Um, there's one about those pension things, but um, I was under the impression that there's some kind of minimum pension, even if income has been none. Is this a case in Finland? Okay, that's a difficult yeah. one. Um, yeah, if okay. you live in Finland, is this person right. has been living in Finland any time of her, in, the, in her life? Because you get a pension in USA, so you cannot get a pension all the always from Finland. You you might be able to do it, but do you, we need to know if you've been work there or been there, living there, in your life. Let's say this example, just as um, for example, if there's been you've stayed you've been a stay-at-home mom, which is more common in the U.S. than in Finland, but let's say that the person was a stay-at-home mom in Finland and then moved to the U.S. and it was a stay-at-home mom here. Is there some kind of um, anything if they move back to Finland in their later years? Yes, yes, if they move back to Finland, they might be. And that's when you then you have to contact with the Kela and uh, certain things out, what what is what has happened. In, and if you have work here, or, or, uh, and those days in Finland when you stay there, that's that's then it is possibility, but we cannot say it's everybody. It's it, it's in well individual cases, so it's you have to really talk to your person and authorities who really knows about the cases then or who can help you. And that's just for all of these same questions. Anything related to um, if you have any background in Finland with working. Um, then you just, you contact yes. Kayla for that. Yes, yes, we are not the right yes. authority. Yes. Yes. Right, okay. Correct, yes. Okay, because there's several of that keep, uh, are still asking. Um, so if a declared Finnish citizen who is 18 to 29 years old, who is a US born and US residing US citizen studies in Finland, how li likely are they to be called out of their university studies in Finland to serve in the FDF with, I don't know what the FDF is. What's the FDF? Uh, FDF would be Finnish Defense Forces, I, oh, I presume. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, so, so um, I, I have no idea about the likelihood. Again, you know, the best idea, if you do move to Finland and are between 18 and 29 years of age and are a male, kindly contact the defense forces or the appropriate regional office and, and just clarify, you know, uh, t tell them you are here to study, you're staying so and so many number um, uh, of years and what the situation is. And I guess that they, the, the Finnish authorities tend to be very reasonable on various, various questions. So, um, if one goes to Finland only to, to complete university education, <laughs> I, it would be my 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 just uh, my guess, but it's only a guess that you would you would be let complete your studies. That's what you go there for. Uh, but that's an issue that needs to take needs to be taken up with the defense force um, representative, uh, just to be sure not to be um, having to pay pay or pay any punishments or sit in jail or anything like that. But studies is usually uh, a good reason for determinants of military service. So my son, for example, studies at the university and he has 
uh, being uh, granted determined because of the studies. So that is usually quite easy. But again, not being the, the responsible authority, um, it's a good idea to contact them ahead of time already. Okay, thank you. If I want to retire in any EU country as a Finnish citizen, do I have a right to live in all EU countries as a Finnish citizen? Should I contact the consulates of EU member countries to find out the details? So just uh, maybe not completely our expertise, but I would say, and anybody actually of, of the Consulate General can probably Com, uh, you know, um, add to what I'm going to say. So, in in the within the EU, uh, a citizen of an EU country, uh, there's freedom of people. So you can live in whichever country you want. You just have to register uh, where you wish to start living. As far as I understand, so if you are a Finnish citizen, you may also live in Spain if you so wish. That is my understanding of the uh, free movement of people. What benefits you would get, that I cannot answer. Okay. Um, I'm noticing that a lot of these questions are quite similar, have already been um, answered in one way or for one way or another. Um, uh, one was about if you have a, a spouse, so if you are, you have the Finnish citizenship and you move with your American or other nationality spouse, um, do they automatically get the to, to come in the residency? So, um, okay, again, not being the authority that makes the decisions on if, you, if we're talking about residence permits here, I, I would Yes, however, that if you are a Finnish citizen and your spouse is an American and you intend to move to Finland, it wouldn't be extremely hard to get a residence permit for that spouse or family members. Family members might even be Finnish citizens. Um, if Tarja or Anne have anything to add to this, uh, am I even remotely correct here or? Yes, you are correct. Yeah, Finnish city, you have your American uh, uh, spouse and you, you can move to Finland and apply your residence permit in Finland in 90, in, before the 90 days period is over for free stay in Finland. Or you can apply before you go from our offices, I mean our mm. consulate. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the answer. Okay, thank you. Um, so these are mostly all the similar questions. I don't know um, have, if anyone else has gone through some of the remaining questions. I feel like most of these have already been covered in one way or another. Um, if, uh, if, 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 well, actually, if you are making a determination, you are the one uh, running the Q&A, so I trust you that, that you check them, we have more or less answered to them, and if we figure out that we didn't, we will uh, we will get back um, uh, at a later stage, or you can, um, our audience can connect with us, as well as with the consulate. So, uh, we are coming to the stage now that I want to thank Mika, Maria, Hanna, Tarja, Anne, and Rino, for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us. And obviously, uh, big thanks uh, goes to our audience for participating. Um, it has been a record-sized uh, audience today. We had uh, uh, over 250 participants, so this, is, uh, this, this was a big deal for us. Uh, and we hope that you will join us again in the future. Check out the Finlandia Foundation Nationals website, our Facebook page, and uh, our YouTube channel for different programs, and our Finposium. And don't hesitate to tell your friends about Finlandia Foundation. Um, we, we have kind of all kinds of uh, different programs uh, uh, going on and coming up. One more time, I thank you all and uh, have the great evening. Thank you. Thank you.